Hello everybody, Aetherin Players here, and today we are going to be doing a guided run of Sector 13. Now this is a solo run of the co-op version of Sector 13. And what do I mean by guided? Well, it's going to be a commentated run where I discuss uh, tips, tricks, and what to do on different scenarios. I'm going to go over what to do with your data nugs at the end of the run, what to prioritize leveling. And I'm going to be talking about enhancements, what's best for the crossbow, uh, what's best for things, and so forth during the run. Now my crossbow, eh, the fourth perk is not ideal, but the first three perks are borderline best in slot, second and third are without a shadow of doubt best in slot. The first one, arguably, you don't want 100% clip size because then you need uh, preemptive and snowball to make the second clip do as much damage as the first uh, shot or the second shot to do as much damage as the first shot, should I say. The fourth perk, ideally, you want the minus 35% damage, but you get the double shot. Obviously, a double shot is worth more than 35% damage. Um, but if I get plus 3 R&D, then I will go for the fourth perk. If I don't get plus 3 R&D, then I'm going to completely ignore the third perk and just go for raw damage from the red cards. So because on parking lot, we spawned on this side, facing that way, that means we will get the generator arena finish. If we would have spawned this side, facing that way, we would have gotten the uh, the quarantine zone barricade finish. So I'm just going to race straight through, killing as much as I can. Now with the generic zombies, the normal zombies, the drones and such, they are of zero concern. You will want to shot every single zombie apart from the helmet guys. Now the helmet guys have a rather deceptive attack range where they will stun you, I, these guys, they will stun you on hit. Uh, you do not want to get stunned by these guys because uh, it will lead to you potentially being attacked by multiple other things. You will lose position and get gap closed by many things. Uh, you always want to focus them when you can. They are a must kill. Um, they are slow but they are a must kill purely because of the fact that they are run enders. If you get stunned at the wrong time, you can die very easily. Um, ideally, we would have gotten Bloodshot on the first perk card here. Uh, reason for that is because Bloodshot is 100% damage once capped out, but you need to get, uh, I'm fairly sure it's 100 kills. Now, obviously, the earlier you're in a run you get it, the more chance you have of getting all of those kills. Now, if I was to get it, let's say, on at the end of office, there isn't enough zombies in the game to actually then cap it out, so you want to get it early. Or at least it's not at present possible to cap it out, but it will be once we get the additional levels further through early access. I wish I could say that my accuracy was on point at present, but really isn't for whatever reason. To be fair, I have been playing quite a few games and I'm, I'm a little drained, so I'm just getting the excuses in early, you know. Um, so yeah, we want to be picking up the decoys, because the decoys are going to help us within this arena that is coming up. Uh, get this other decoy. Decoys are a friend in this next arena because because I have uh, played so many runs and because I have killed the boss so many times, at least I'm 90% sure that it only activates once you've done played the game for quite a while. Um, I'm going to get a shield guy, a hazmat guy, two scientists, a gunner, and a bunch of zombies. If you're new to the game, you will only get the hazmat guy. So time will tell what happens. Uh, with this, if it is actually uh, appearing for everybody, even early in the game. I do get the feeling that this scenario will get nerfed slightly. It does seem a little OP, I'll be honest. Well, to be fair, it seems OP when you're soloing. Oh, 
I have no idea why he's gone passive. First time I've seen that. You can actually shoot them on the side, but for whatever reason, I can't do it at present. Whatever, I'll just cheese it. I was trying to showcase shooting them on the side, but I wasn't getting the angle right. You can shoot them in the, the wrist slash arm, and you will uh, continuously damage them. Um, but yeah. That did not work it out at all for me. Either way, that is how you do that scenario. Uh, you use your decoys to distract the zombies. You kill as many of the zombies as you can. If you have an angle on the hazmat guy, then kill the hazmat guy to remove at least one person charging at you. Uh, focus the charges as much as you can as well. Uh, the scientists as much as you can as well, should I say. Uh, scientists are going to force out your dodge, which is probably going to put your dodge on cooldown for... Uh, when the charges are charging at you. Um, I'm obviously going to take the free reroll here. It's a really good option. I'm probably just going to take the 5 health every 4 seconds because a little love tap every now and then you're going to recover from. 100% uh, health doesn't mean anything because I'm not going to get hit often. Now lobby is a lot easier than people say. Um, you can spawn outside or you can spawn inside of reception. Outside of reception is a lot easier than inside of reception. Um, but inside of reception is not as hard as people say. So don't panic too much uh, when it comes to reception or lobby in general. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of being afraid of everything. You don't really need to be afraid of anything. AI, at the end of the day, is very predictable and will always behave the same. So you can never be surprised by something once you have experience with it. And once you have experience with it and understand it, you know how to counter everything in the game. So, Just get confident with things and you will never have any issues. With any game like this, confidence is the key. Now, as great as it would be to have Soul Harvest, I'm not going to die, nor do I want to waste my uh, money or my enhancement, should I say, on useless defensive cards, because at the end of the day, damage is more defensive than defensive cards. I'm going to get that so I can get 50% reload. Now, lobby is a cakewalk because I will reload fast enough for everything. And I've basically turned my crossbow into a machine gun, and I don't know why I didn't pick up the ammo, but now we have. Now with this you want to stay roughly central, you do not want to camp this area because you will get pinned. So you want to stay central here, guard both sides and then eventually push out because pushing out means you have control of the entire area. Empty. And what we don't want to do is miss. Empty. You saw nothing. I don't know why I took that shot but whatever. But yeah, you can see by the 50% reload, we are practically now running a crossbow machine gun. And the game is now on easy mode. Crossbow is, without a doubt, the most overpowered weapon in the game. And do not be surprised if it gets nerfed within the coming uh, weeks. At present, for now though, because I'm doing a full-on commentary and I want to explain as much as I can, then... I'm just going to use the weapon that is easiest to use because it means that while I'm less focused... because because I'm typing, uh, because I'm speaking, should I say, um, then I don't need to focus so much on the gameplay, and I can just uh, focus on what I'm saying while I make continuous errors. 
because I'm too focused on the gameplay. So I said we want to guard this area and then we want to push out because there is no point in sitting here. We may as well go on the offensive and start clearing the room because wave three, even though people like to say it is really hard, is not hard at all once you've got the damage and we have the damage because we have the reload so we have the rate of fire which means we have really high damage uh, because we almost have sniper crossbow damage technically while having the 50% reload so we are almost a machine gun so we can go offensive because we have the damage output to clear a horde if we would have gone green cards thinking that we were playing defensive because we didn't want to die then we wouldn't have had the damage uh, and we would have been more under risk because we wouldn't have had the DPS and the rate of fire to actually deal with the hard. So skirmishers are very very vulnerable to silenced weapons because of the fact that they are always asleep uh, and they're always woken up by gunfire so if you have a silenced weapon you can clear everything out around them and then kill them last um, or focus them first and pretty much skip the horde around so we want to kill the remaining ones of these waves so the lights come on and we get to uh, focus on getting the card for the side room which at present I haven't seen so it's obviously going to be on one mob that was left somewhere for whatever reason where are you? there you are no, there you are <laughs> oh, there you are it's going to be one of them, either way. So, we want Bloodshot, potentially this run, or potentially this round. Uh, this is going to be unfortunate. Um, honestly, going to reroll and get his Bloodshot. That is ideal. Um, then we want Snowball, Preemptive Strike. Uh, the 50 meter, sorry, I always say the 50 meter range. I don't know why I say 50 meter range. The 5 meter range perks are really not great for boss killing because we are never going to maintain uh, the 5 meter range throughout the whole fight. Uh, by the way, because we only got two zombies and no range zombie there, we will get the zombies from behind once I go further forward. There we go. If you get the gunner, you don't get the zombies behind, but because we got two zombies, then we get the zombies from behind. It's the only one way you'll get things coming from behind in these side rooms. You just need to double check what you have in your room. If you have two zombies, then you'll get zombies from behind. Uh, don't want any of them. Don't want any of them. That is completely fine. I said we will only go for tier 4 of the crossbow if we get plus 3 R&D. If we do not get plus 3 R&D, we will not bother going for the 4th perk. Because 15% damage bonus on the boss is not worth uh, 3 cards or 4 cards. It just isn't. It really, really isn't. You want to focus on damage cards. Uh, and if you get plus 3 R&D, then you get plus 3 R&D. And then it's you may as well go for the tier 4. But until then, not worth it. Uh, so because we got all these gunners... Uh, we know that we're going to get a skirmisher wave, so there will be skirmishers in this wave. So you want to play as far back as you can. We have a silenced weapon, so we should not attract them. Uh, they will mostly remain in the top corner unless I go too far forward and end up pulling them. Or if I shoot that barrel, I will then start attracting them. Otherwise, they will remain neutral asleep in the corner. I may get one or two, but the majority of them will stay asleep. If you have a, a non-silenced weapon, still hang out in this corner because the skirmishers are really bad at corners. Uh, they can't charge around a corner. Uh, they may charge and arc their charge slightly, but they can't do like a, a 90 degree angle turn, for example. So you are completely fine being around a corner uh, or rolling around a corner and you won't get hit by their charge. Uh, Obviously, you can just roll the charge, but when you roll the charge, uh, you are then more susceptible to a horde. For obvious reasons, you will get backed into a corner. Uh, your roll will be on cooldown, and you will have less options to deal with a horde. If you just stand out the way, use a corner, 
then you will maintain your roll availability for hard should push come to shove and you need to roll to gain distance or to avoid attacks from uh, let's say the helmet guy that will stun you eventually I will start hitting shots and make myself look like uh, the player that I am when I don't record but when I record for some reason my accuracy stops becoming legless aim and starts becoming uh, yeah whatever as you can see the skirmisher remained asleep the whole time there should actually be two so the second one is asleep somewhere but I'm not gonna bother I have 4,000 credits I don't really need to worry about getting more um, it's enough for rerolls at present, especially while I have a free reroll. Now, ideally, here we get a bunch of red perks and no greens. Purple one is ideal too because we can roll for uh, the special ability damage. Um, again, I'm going to reroll here. Going to reroll again. Reroll again. Completely fine. I don't want a five meter perk, and especially while it's a red dedicated perk, I'm more chance of hitting a platinum red. I have enough credits, so I'm going to just re roll that. As long as I don't go beneath 2000 credits, that is completely fine to re roll multiple times to hit a platinum. Ideally, I would have gotten preemptive or snowball, but it's fine that I didn't. Because we have human. Uh, soldiers here, we're going to get zombies from behind. So I'm just going to go sit in the corridor and wait for them. So there are multiple different variations of uh, the officers. Now, this could either be a scientist first room or a warehouse first room. That will be determined and oh plus three RD. So there we go. We're going for tier four perk. Or should I say we have got tier four perk? I would have been going for it if I'd have had the other tier four, I uh the double shot, but I didn't have that one. I had the PS targets, so I automatically get it from plus three RD. Which is fine. God damn it, I always forget. Biggest hint I can give for the office, by the way, is to make sure to use the console. And don't be an idiot like me. If you become an idiot like me, then you will forget to do the console almost every single run. Right, so we got the soldier uh, version, so we will get soldiers throughout this run. Uh, it's the technically the hardest variation. Um, every time I've been trying to no hit, by the way, if I get this variation, I just immediately out F4. It is not possible to no hit this. Uh, with the soldiers, or it might be possible, but the extreme amount of RNG that re you require for it is uh, beyond compare. So it's like, don't even bother. If you're trying to no hit, then just out of four. Get out of the lobby and try and get one without the soldier waves. So no red crit in here, but I'm still just going to clear. Um, it's credits at this point. I rerolled a few times on the previous enhancement, so I may as well do it again and build my money back up. Especially considering we're getting crates coming up and I want to push for more damage. I'm not happy with the damage that I have at present because I didn't get some of the essentials. Well, I did, to be fair, get some of the essentials, but yeah. I want a secondary yellow weapon so I can get one more. I didn't actually check in the previous room. Um, I don't know why I didn't check. I hope that there wasn't a yellow weapon there. If I then go back and check the video but you want always want to try and get a secondary weapon for for one way one way being 100% damage bonus if you manage to catch both 30% um, for the silver version and the platinum version is 70% um, so it's 100% total if you have two weapons of the same type now because we get the shield guy here we want to use this square table he can never have his shield face us if we uh, use this because he will always try and walk around the table I'm not the biggest fan of that I think it completely uh, nullifies the mechanic but if you get a shield guy here do not kite out of the room do not kite anywhere else in this room just literally run straight around this table and just follow him around the table and shoot him he can't ever keep his uh, shield facing you if you do that 
So we're going to get the soldiers coming in through the bottom door here. Or we should do. And we're not going to for whatever reason. But there's no many soldiers that come through there. Um... So we want to look for damage here. One way I may as well get it and hope that I get a yellow weapon. Uh, 150 damage every seven shot is really good, but 30% uh, raw damage for you know the other six shots is still better. I hope that I do actually land a uh, second yellow. If I don't land a second yellow, then that is a completely wasted perk. But the chances of not getting a yellow weapon between now and the boss is pretty slim. So yeah, I've said it now, haven't I? So. So in this room, there will be uh, one of two scenarios. There will be skirmishes at the end, or there will be a mad scientist. Mad scientist being the one that throws multiple different types of grenades, as well as uh, a 10% health. He will uh, try to kill him. Well, detonate himself. He sets himself on fire, and um, yeah, he will charge you and try to blow you up. So, whether you're in 3-man or you are uh, solo, you want to make sure that you kill him when he sets himself on fire. If you don't kill him when he sets himself on fire, he will run at you incredibly fast and blow himself up and you with him. So yeah, you really, really need to be careful with that guy. He's probably the hardest mini-boss in the game. Um, the Skirmisher, Exterminator, and the uh, Shield guy and the Hazmat guy are all incredibly easy. Uh, their attacks and everything are predictable. Uh, the Grenade Throwing Chemist, who will self-detonate, is incredibly awkward because his AI is a little more uh, clunky, I'd say. He can throw grenades on top of himself randomly, sporadically. Uh, in a manner that is not easy to see, especially if you've shot him. There was a run that I did the other day where I fired at him while he was in the animation of throwing a grenade. Um, it cancelled the animation, so I thought that he hadn't thrown a grenade because nothing came out, but then something at my feet blew up, despite the fact that even when I checked back, there was nothing on the floor. Um, so yeah, there is some visual issues with the uh, AI on the scientist. So it is what it is. This room, it could be either zombies or it could be skirmishers. There will be four skirmishers or multiple zombies. Or three skirmishers, sorry. Uh, this room, there will be skirmishers and ghosts because there was skirmishers in the previous room. Uh, if there's no skirmishers in the previous room, then this room will just be the helmet guy and the ghost. I uh, can't tell if it's the yellow crit. No, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, you can look into the uh, rooms and see if it's a yellow crit or if it's a enhancement. So again, because it's uh, two zombies and not nothing else, it will be uh, zombies from behind. Ideally, we'll try to hit them though, you know. Wow. Can I blame it being late and I've had a drink or two? Can I? Is that possible? Uh, so we don't want any of these. Ideally, we're hunting a main damage perk. Uh, I could go for it. I'm probably going to go for it because I don't want to reroll again. It's already costing 700. Uh, it's not worth the reroll above 700, 900 credits. Uh, unless you are right at the very end and you know that you don't have a use for the credits. But otherwise, you want to make sure that you keep 1,000 credits for uh, deep storage safe house. Uh... You also, there's a little cheese you can do. Well, not cheese, but you want to activate uh, the door to look through safe house uh, deep storage and see what uh, cubes you have before you go into the two side rooms. Reason for that is because you can gauge uh, how much you want to reroll on those two cubes in the side rooms. Because if you know that there is no red cubes in deep storage safe room, then you know you can blow all of your credits. Uh, there's obviously no point in buying uh, 
let's say green cubes or something in deep storage safe house if you're confident that you're not going to get hit by the boss then you've got nothing to worry about and then obviously it would just be wasting a thousand credits if you were to buy blues now i'm going to buy one of these because i need uh i need special damage uh there we go i need special damage because um you need 15% or more to uh, to one-shot stun the ghosts to make them vulnerable in deep storage. Everywhere prior to deep storage, you can one-shot stun ghosts with no damage boosts. But in deep storage, you need at least one damage boost to be able to one-shot stun. Um, and obviously, you want to be able to one-shot stun. Otherwise, you have to kite for uh, 20 seconds while you wait for it to come back off cooldown which puts you in a lot of situations where you could end up dying or well you could basically open yourself up to a lot of bad RNG and things happening so you want to make sure that you one shot stun always uh, in future patches when obviously further things come out and further stages obviously we're probably going to need uh, more damage boosts to make sure we one shot stun ghosts now this with this mushrooms, glands explodey bubble thingies uh there's a pep purple crit there and there's a red crit there we want to ignore the pair of them for now we want to race around and pop these because they're permanently spawn mobs um and that's what we don't want we don't want to have a random swarm of mobs spawning uh great if you don't have bloodshot maxed out so if you don't have bloodshot maxed out feel free to let this actually spawn mobs and then max out bloodshot Pretty sure you can't shoot that one yeah so you want to go up over for the next two. Only one tier for that, one tier for that one, and then two tiers for the next two. And now they'll stop spawning, and we can go loot the other things. Sometimes there'll be mobs that can drop off here. It's not always though, so you don't always need to worry. Just always be careful, though, just in case you randomly start uh, not paying attention and stuff drops off to attack you. Um, I want to hit something else damagey. I'll roll once more. Okay, that's really bad. Um, once more. Okay, that's decent. Well, that's really good, should I say. Not ideal that I wasted so much credits though. That was really, really, really greedy of me. Um, never do that. I'll be honest with you. Just never do it. So we have the original version of deep storage we don't have um do you know i didn't check for a yellow weapon um i there was probably a yellow weapon in the previous version i just didn't pay attention i s forgot about uh one way too busy commentating so stun this kill it and then we're going to push around and keep going we're not going to do the side rooms yet. We are going to go back and uh, build up our uh, purple bar. You can build it up here. And it's a quite a common bug, by the way, that uh, the glands keep spawning for whatever reason. So just basically AFK here, regenerate our purple bar. In fact, I'm actually going to get some ammo. Now we're going to continue round. That was an unnecessary hit. So we want to fire our gun here to lure the two uh, purples that were there. Wow, the fact that I got hit by that. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't shouldn't get hit by them. Especially when you were actually purposefully pulling them. It's kind of bad that you do that. So obviously we kill the two purples down there. Uh, 
and this is the stage complete. We just got the two side rooms to do. We want to scout out what uh, what cubes are in the safe house, like I said. I can't remember what the red box dropped. I don't think I can see from here, can I? No. It should be easy to yeah. go back though, because I can run along the crates. Just so I can see. I can also kill a couple of them. Just to make sure that I uh, got Bloodshot maxed out. So I'm just going to wait because I want to make sure that I actually run off the right area here. Right. Gonna quickly check, I said, make sure there was this wasn't a yellow weapon. Nope. I didn't think it was, but I just wanted to be sure. I really hope that I get a yellow weapon so I get the 30% damage, but it's no biggie because I didn't get the 70%, so it's not like I'm missing out on 100%, just 30%. I'm just gonna kill that for the credits. And then I'm gonna check on what the cube is. So we got a yellow cube, absolutely useless, I don't need it. So if I get a red cube in here, I can reroll multiple times. And then if it's a generic cube, I can reroll a few times. Actually, I'm actually going to go to this one first, because if it's the one where there's a dedicated red cube, I can reroll a few times. Um, and it is. Potentially there's a red cube, so... There is. Perfect. I can try and get Snowball. Or... Uh, yeah. So I'm going to get this one first. Um, snowball, perfect. Because now my second shot in the clip does 100% damage. Lucky shot, perfect. And now I can reroll the other one a couple of times and hopefully get uh, one of the other red damage cards. I don't care about the 5 meters, like I said, because the boss will be permanently chasing you, so you will not benefit from it 100% of the time. Um, obviously you will benefit from it a lot, but not 100% of the time, thus it's not the number one priority. Uh, we don't have all the damage cards in the world, it's not the best, you know, but it's whatever. I didn't check for yellow weapons in the previous room because I'm an idiot. Um, not going to reroll anymore. It's not worth. I can just get the yellow card next room if there's no yellow weapon. And I also need to make sure that I have anywhere between 400 and 600 go uh, credits for a yellow weapon. So I can at least activate the 30% damage. I'm going to go check in here because I didn't look at the weapons. Uh, it was a grenade and a sniper rifle, so yeah, no yellow weapon there. Um, yeah. Is a yellow weapon in here? Would be ideal, but yeah. Oh, that was lucky, I guess. Don't care about reloading it, may as well pick this up. Um, may as well just get the movement speed, can't be bothered re-rolling. There's no reason to. Doesn't affect me anyway, I'm fairly sure. So, at least I got the 30% damage active. Now, when it comes to the boss, the boss has, um, what, five different attacks. One, he attacks with his right hand. He will do a short ranged stab. Uh, his weapon will glow blue. If it hits you, it will knock you back two meters and stun you. It does moderate damage. You do not want to get caught by this. It's one of the most essential to roll because it will reduce your DPS. Second attack, he will put both arms above his head and slam them to the ground. When he does this, it will stun you and do quite substantial damage. You want to avoid this pretty much at all times. It also uh, does debris falling from the ceiling, which will appear in small circles on the floor, which you don't want to get caught by. His third attack is his panic grenade launches. He will slunge back slightly, uh, or stoop a bit, and fire, I think... It's six panic grenades uh, in a 360 arc around him. They will somewhat prioritize your position, so you want to run away. If you have a ranged weapon, just run away and keep on shooting him. If you have a melee, well, not a melee weapon, but a melee ranged weapon like a shotgun, then you can also just run directly on top of him. Uh, if you see him start the animation, run away and then run back in, and you can just keep on blasting him away while you're stood up beneath him. 
Uh, his other attacks are his Gatling gun, which he will fire with his left hand. You can just roll straight through the uh, the fire and not get caught by it. His other attack is a charge, where he will uh, vibrate for a bit and then launch himself after about two seconds in a straight line, and then he will follow that up with a Gatling gun attack, sweeping across right to left. Um, and his final attack is he will fire at the uh, steam valves or whatever it is on the exterior of the room, and um, they will start spewing out steam. And I'm not quite sure what makes them ignite, but being around them, they'll randomly start going on fire and deal damage over time to you. Um, at 50% health, he will go to phase two, and the exterior of the room, this uh, grate or cladding, sheeting, whatever the hell you would call this, it will collapse and make the room smaller. Just don't be on the outside of the room and you're completely fine. Uh, other than that, that's it. So we just go in and we're going to kill the boss, hopefully in under one minute, but likely it's going to be about one minute and ten seconds because I don't have the best perks. I don't have one way two and I don't have the other two damage cards, uh, the raw damage cards. So is what it is, but let's just see how fast we do it. Now we just wait. I'm always going to pick up this as well because it's going to disappear. If I didn't miss those last three shots, that would have been under a one minute kill, but whatever, it's a one minute and four kill. Uh, I missed three shots at the end, otherwise it would have been a one minute and four kill. I uh, Sorry, it would have been an under one minute kill. I also think that I fired one shot too early when he phased. Uh, but, honestly, it is what it is. That was a perfect showcasing of the boss. Right, now when it comes to the data nuggets, what you want to do here when you're new to the game, max out mag pouch because likelihood is as a new player your teammates are going to be picking up all of the ammo packs and pretty much leaving you in the dust uh, so you want to take up this as quickly as you can and roll recharge two priorities there completely ignore uh, medical equipment it's not really essential uh, most players when they see you have low health will let you get the green cubes and you can take the health recovery so that's not really too much of a deal uh, when you can max out data nugs because you will then be able to level up faster Get Shock Absorber next, because it is a really great damage reduction. Get Reroll Enhancements after that. Ignore these two, because they are new bit. Your special ability doesn't need a 15% cooldown, because your special ability is almost never going to get used. Uh, unless you are Beaker, but even then, the green cubes far outweigh Beaker's ability. I don't care what anybody says. And become invincible three seconds after being revived. Nine times out of ten, people are going to revive you after combat, not in combat, so that's not really important. Now here, even though I assume you've seen this video and probably love the look of the crossbow, until you have a tier 3 or tier 4 crossbar, uh, crossbow, then don't really worry about getting the yellow version of this, just get the red first. Now if you're wondering what exactly this is, this is in correlation with uh, this here. For every point that you get in these, you will unlock weapon perks. So, for example, I needed to get 9 yellow points to unlock uh, the 15% damage and shots fired uh, while aiming through targets are pierced. Uh, I started off with a base of 4. I started off with a base of 4 because I have a common R&D proficiency. Now, red weapons, firearms, are predominantly the most all well the most all-round and better performing weapons in the game psionic weapons are not good bionic weapons are not good the crossbow is the only good r&d weapon and 
the crossbow is the most overpowered weapon in the game at present, but likely to receive a nerf. Firearms are the next best weapons in the game. The submachine gun, shotgun, and assault rifle are really amazing weapons. Um, the sniper and the revolver are not great, but it is whatever. When it comes to the third tier, get attack optimization. Damage is the best defense you have in this game. The quicker things die, the less mobs there are to deal damage to you. After this, you probably want uh, regeneration, and then you want 900 credits. 900 credits is great because you get early cubes, you get early weapons. However, and I, this is a big however, if you don't have the damage by default, then it doesn't really matter if you're buying a weapon. So you always want to prioritize optimization before that, and then you can say that whether or not the credits or the regeneration is up to you. Three health every five seconds isn't a lot, especially if you can get a cube that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to afford and potentially get the health regen. Um, so then, too, it's personal preference. You come straight down, you will get extended clip, 50% clip size. You will get card collector, card collector is one of the most vital uh, perks in the game. You get a lot of enhancements throughout the level uh, and you get plus 15 max HP for every single one. When you consider I am solo and I have gotten uh, what um, 24 cards. Uh, so yeah, I've got the perk 24 times. I'm not going to do the maths because I'm bad at maths. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then you come back up, your max uh, panic gauge. Uh, this will stop you from being panicked as much by the bugs as well as uh, panic grenades. I'm embarrassed now because I couldn't work out in quick math that without using a calculator. So yeah, don't judge me too harshly. And then after that, you pretty much max anything you want. But there, those are the essentials. Uh, max red first, then you can max for the crossbow if the crossbow hasn't been nerfed by the time you're watching this. Um, but yeah. I hope this run was helpful to you. I hope you found it somewhat informative. I'm going to quickly go over the mini bosses one more time because I don't think I even saw them all in this run. So the hazmat guy, I wish I'd have done this at the start, but I'm going to do it now and I'll probably leave it in the description uh, that I've done a brief description at the end. So hazmat guy, hazmat guy is three attacks. He has a charge which has a long wind up so you're able to see and then you will just dodge straight past or through. His other attack is he will just walk at you and then just attack. You can, it's quite obvious and you can just dodge it. The third attack is a poison cloud. He will do this only when you're stunned. If he's caught you with a charge, he will then follow it up with the poison cloud. He will stamp his feet on the floor, lean forward and do a poison cloud. You just make sure you're not in it. If you roll out of it, it does no damage. So. Like, it's nothing. You need to be at least 5 metres away, or 3 or 5 metres away, and you're fine. Shield guy, he does the exact same. Uh, it's no biggie. It's basically the same mob, just with a defensive aspect. Um, skirmisher. Skirmisher, you've already saw. I've already pretty much told you what to do with skirmishers. You want to hug walls, and you want to hug corners, because they can't leap around things. Uh... Their charge and their jump is quite obvious. You can just roll straight out of it. Um, you'll get the timing down after a few hours of playing. So don't really worry too much about that if you get caught by it quite a few times early on. It's no biggie. Just get used to the timing and then dodge it after a few runs. Um, the exterminator, which is the big guy with the tentacles, don't walk in his purple cloud. Unless it's right at the end of lobby, for example, you know within a couple of seconds you'll be in the safe room and be able to cleanse the debuff. Uh, with the exterminator, when his tentacles over his face glow pinky purple, just roll and he will fire the tentacles at where you were. Um, if you were caught by it, he'll pull you, pull you into melee, so don't get caught by them. It's very, very easy to dodge. Uh, just dodge straight away the very second... Um, the very second you see his tentacles glow, wait about half a second to a second, and then dodge. Um, as I said, the mad scientist just nuke him down, and if he glows red, make sure you kill him before he reaches you. If he reaches you, he will probably one-shot, one-kill you. Other than that, I have pretty much explained everything, I believe. Um, one thing I will say is this is a really great game. If you haven't actually bought it yet, and it's something you're looking at, uh, potential for buying, then do buy it. Uh, if you're not in the, the server Discord, then 
or if you're not in uh, the games discord then join it if you have any questions people on the discord are really really helpful uh, I also try to help people as often as I can um, if you are a new player who is struggling to do your first run then feel free to leave a comment and I am more than happy to do a run with you and help you through to you do your first uh, completion uh, so thank you very much for watching like subscribe and I will continue to do more content um, see you around take care